Okay, thanks. Thanks again. Again, Esther, for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Let's wait for a second. They say going live now. We are live, yes. We can start. Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Perfect. Hello, uh, this is Gizda Marino. Okay, thanks. thanks again. Uh, so today I will again, be presenting uh, Digital uh, Garage. Uh, Actually, it's announced in the Amber uh, Network uh, Festival as Digital uh, Garage, but I just added some, you know, uh, addition now. to that because 2021, 21, some explorations. Uh, uh, you know, I think we've been introducing Daraj, Daraj Art Collective in terms of the, you know, the spatial context, but also in terms of the arts initiatives in the previous, you know, talks in the, in the festival. Uh, but still, I want to underline uh, something about... Following the, the nature of the Daraj art collectives that you happen to know a little bit, if not, I will be explaining them from my perspective, is that uh, the, in the nature of the Daraj, there, there are some randomness and there are some togetherness. So the digital version versions of the Daraj art collectives, we've been working through the same spirit, I would say. Uh, I wouldn't say methodology or anything because it was more like this random growing projects together, either ever as a virtual reality work or as an augmented reality work. So anyway, so I repeat again, my name is Gusda Marinolo. I'm teaching at uh, the Izmir University of Economics in Turkey. Uh, my background is uh, architecture. I graduated as an architect with like some other degrees in design and even, uh, you know, in like I had an interest in archaeology. Uh, so these are a, a few series of projects that I've been doing in several other places. Like you can check online. That's not like, you know, uh, the focus. But, you know, in all over the projects that I am showing here, I'm exploring the digital. Uh, so I've been exploring digital in terms of the digital fabrication, as you said, you can see in the first slide, uh, like com computational tools in architecture, especially with a focus in architecture. And then the second one is about art history. Uh, it's like the virtual reality tour that we created uh, for an ancient site in Turkey. So we remodeled the site and together with the archaeologists, of course, and we built a little virtual reality game out of it. So it's a combination of what is seen as, uh, you know, uh, and what is what remained from the years and what uh, the archaeologists, uh, you know, are seeing or imagining about these buildings. That's one is about this temple and one is about the, the theater, the ancient theater that we have in Turkey. Or sometimes, you know, the digital tools happen to be uh, more taught of more uh, like analysis tools so that the architects can, the archaeologists can visualize uh, virtual reality uh, in order to have their interpretations about these sites. Or sometimes, as you see at the bottom that I just recently started, it's like a, we just created a mobile game. A uh, serious mobile game, so that you know we just like teach the history uh, to young people. So in a way, following the methodology of like learning by playing 
uh, you know, because now the game industry, you know, not only as an industry, but like the game logic and how uh, young people spend their time in the games taught us that we can teach them some, you know, some information through these games. Or back in the early days when I was doing my PhD, I had an interest in underwater archaeology. It was about the virtual museum of underwater culture heritage. So uh, not only on land, but at other extreme environments, uh, I've been doing some kind of a visualization uh, of, the, of some works. Of course, this focus more was more in uh, the, I would say, scientific part. Uh, that's why I want to say that I can never call myself as an artist, but I've been working now, with, like luckily now, with some artists, uh, artists of Daraj. So in a way, uh, all the projects that, you know, I will be presenting today uh, in Daraj neighborhood, please like look from a perspective of a, you know, researcher or, you know, an instructor at school or a, an architect, I can say digital architect, but not, not rather like a, from an artistic point of view. Anyway, so these are some of the previous projects that, you know, I did. Uh, if you are curious about what I did before, uh oops you know please remind me and i hope i can skip it sorry yes okay now, sorry, it took me some, my computer is as old as, I mean, a bit younger than me, so it's not working perfectly. So, uh, so about the topic of this talk, this week, uh, like this week, as like the first one of this week, actually, uh, I will be exploring why, what we did as uh, a digital garage team. Uh, so we started from, you know, like analyzing uh, this art collective in Turkey, who are independently working from any art galleries and museums and actually uh, referring to, you know, to Foster, uh, I wanted to say to whole Foster here, we are witnessing a period where the art is more in the streets and the art and, and artists are more like independent, but the architects are building more of artwork. So in a way, uh, especially in an uh, in an uh, uninstitutional place of Izmir, we realize that like this art collective specifically is creating like some hybrid, temporary, uh, mobile, and functionally blurred concept of art space in the streets of Araj, Daraj. So what we were thinking is that is it like is there any way to collect these artworks together so that we create an interactive and immersive reality out of it uh, through and following the the spirit of Daraj? And then we started like first of all like exploring the sites like the site that is quite important in terms of. Uh, Izmir as well, because that's like the old, uh, I mean, that's still the harbor town, not far from the new harbor that, that is still working. Uh, but also that's the, 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 the industrial city. That's the old industrial city of, Is of Izmir. As you can see on the map, I mean, it doesn't matter you are from Izmir or not, but you just like you see the, the yellow point over there as Daraj. Daraj Art Collective, the streets of Daraj that you will happen to see in the, you know, in the slides. But also all around it, uh, there are some high-rise buildings. High-rise means like these residential gated communities. So in a way, Daraj is squeezed in between the old industrial buildings, such as like Shark Sanayi or electrical power plant or the natural gas factory, Sumer Bank factory, uh, and like all the red dots that you see. And then in between the blue dots that are so in this little town, uh, in this little village, or maybe neighborhood is better, uh, of Umur Bay, Umur Bay neighborhood, not far from the center of Izmir, that is Asanja. But center means really downtown, like you know, all the cultural activities, the leisure activities happen to like be in Asanja. So that's in this dense area, uh, Daraj is located. Uh, 
and when you check the artworks there are a lot of like a variety of artworks all over the years like some performances that you see in the first slides or some uh you know some ready-made or some you know some other you know sculpture work some more spatial three-dimensional works as uh, you know as much as some two two frames like some frames or uh, in the urban context, you can see uh, some artworks like attached to the facades of the building and sometimes integrating fully uh, with the facade of the building. So in, in a way, uh, you know, or some other works that you see in the last four slides, uh, that some collective works where they are passing, you know, one art, art, artwork to another one. In a way, not only these artworks are exhibited there, but actually the, the space, you know, that art is a space as the streets, you know, they are exhibited uh, as part of this uh, town. Uh, from a very, you know, uh, you know, I would say like bird eye view of the area. If, if you go to their website, darach.com, uh, you will see, uh, you know, the spread, what we are talking about. Like the streets are more like two to two, three-story, uh, you know, old building facades, mostly, uh, like, uh, I would say, um, as, like, the car repair shops or other repair shops that we call in Turkey, like, Sanayi, but a small version of it. And the artists happened to settle down in these areas because they could rent, like, a huge spaces as, like, the, their ateliers uh, for such a, you know, low you know uh budget i would say and they started like changing the whole uh city uh you know all over the years that we i will i will be talking about uh unfortunately i missed them since the beginning they started in 2016 uh with the, their with their first exhibition uh and in 2017 they started like doing and continuing their annual uh, you know, exhibitions, but my uh, random uh, meeting with Daraj people uh, happened in their Daraj 3 exhibition in 2018. Uh, I was in Al Sanjak, you know, and I wanted to like, you know, take my car and go somewhere. Then I happened to bump into uh, like Tom, Tom Keo, who is another, you know, like, oh, who is like a quite an, uh, you know, one of the independent art collective is uh, in his place as, uh, I'm sorry, I forget about his place. Uh, anyway, Tom's uh, place. And then I, I, meet, I met that people, these people, the right artists. Uh, I'm talking about almost like a few people that like Jen Khan is one of these, you know, Aisha is one of these, Ali Jam. They built together this collective. And if I'm not wrong, there are over 55, well, 15 people living in the neighborhood. And all over the years, they did eight exhibitions. Some are annual, and some are more like a little versions of these annual meetings. And since 2018, as a researcher, uh, I've been, we've been together with, uh, you know, some colleagues, we've been searching uh, and re doing research uh, on their works. Uh, but in 2019, uh, we became one of the artists that I will show. So we just uh, create an augmented reality artwork out of it. Uh, then in 2019, I would refer uh, to their book that I happen to be one of the, you know, like a little part in this book. Uh, then that's the collection of all the artworks and artists all over the years. Uh, in 2020, no need to say the pandemic happened. So their annual, uh, you know, street exhibition that is based on the interaction of people on the street uh, as viewers, as the artists who are producing, and the artisans means you know all the people living already in the neighborhood, uh, like all these interactive uh, exhibitions uh, are cancelled. So they asked us whether we can do any virtual tour in 2020, we did their virtual tour. Uh, and the, like since then, in like we started in 2019 and we are still uh, working on an augmented reality uh, app. Uh, we call it like a virtual museum of Daraj these days. 
so that's like our little artwork that we created that we call Arsızlar. Um, so it's kind of a, a AR uh, work. Uh, so all started with another collective, uh, like collective effort. Uh, the uh, illustrator Sadi, uh, you know, was interested and he was putting to his Instagram uh, some of the works that he's creating. And one random person, Mami, actually, uh, created a 3D model of his works. And uh, then during the, their fourth exhibition at Daraj, we decided to, you know, include these things, but not in real, real, but rather in virtual. So for that, as you can see in this little video, uh, we just created a little, we designed a little QR code that we painted on the street. Again, and we picked actually two spaces in the art. And then we made some mock-up models, whether it's working as simple as, in a, in a, you know, on a paper, then, you know, through this code. Uh, it, we use very conventional AR tools at that time. Uh, Spark AR, that was not really, uh, you know, I mean, it is still like, quite powerful, but it's now known as like the Instagram filters. But, you know, through the Spark AR, uh, we just like uh, let people to, you know, click to the link and you know check the artwork through their phones so it was i guess they're the first augmented reality artwork that is exhibited uh, in daraj so everything that we have recorded was like one night event one day event so it was through the screenshots that we just like collected and that's the team actually that we just like put them together Anyway, so as you can see with some, you know, trial and error, it, like in like, like in few days, we happen to create this, uh, you know, augmented reality artwork all together with the team. Then, uh, sorry, my computer is a bit slow. I'm trying to pass this. I think each time there's a video. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, then after this very short and quick artwork, uh, we just like, we wrote a project to have, uh, you know, to have this virtual museum. Uh, the virtual museum was in my mind for a long time, actually. Uh, but by virtual museum, I'm not saying that, you know, we go and digitize the artworks that are already in a museum, but rather we wanted to use the, you know, the occasion of Daraj being so independent, being so, you know, uh, independent of space and independent of time at the same time and independent of artists and institutions, then uh, we know that there will never be a the Raj uh, Museum, so that's why we wanted to recreate this in the virtual, in the digital domain. So for that, uh, we just made a very similar work as like an archaeology of art data. So we started collecting the images of the artwork since 2016 through, of course, uh, the Raj people. And we just like collected all of these through like some basic documentation methods and then we started having some discussions with the artists so that what's the best way to make their artwork digitized. I can say digitized, I can say like make it like virtual, I mean, or better we call it how we can augment their artworks uh, during, you know, uh, using the applications that we are still designing. By the way, that's an ongoing project. That's why there are so much Laura Ipsum there. The content is not there. We are still working in the interface. And at the same time, you know, like we have a wonderful team of uh, engineers, architects versus like, uh, you know, graphic designers. And this work uh, that, you know, this interface designed by a team run by Doruk Turkman uh, from Yashar University and our graduate, our fourth year students actually. So uh, what we are designing is that is this is that mobile app so that uh, you create your own collections. Uh, 
or you create your own uh, exhibitions. And at the same time, whenever you are, wherever you are, either at home or in the art, you can go to these artworks and you can visualize them in different methods. By different methods, uh, by the way, I will explain how we do you augmenting. Uh, we just like, that's a little bit of this uh, interface that we are still working on. Actually, the interface is almost done. Uh, but we are planning to have, uh, you know, this kind of a, a location-based uh, augmented reality so that you can scroll up and down and see the artworks. And whenever you click to an artwork, you can just like have some information about these, uh, you know, like basic photographs, basic images, but also some information about these artworks. So in a way, uh, are we doing something, uh, you know, okay for the right people that still like we are in an ongoing discussion whether, you know, they would really love to enjoy, you know, this kind of systematically organized database for them, but so far so good. So we are still working on these. So that's like the interface of our augmented reality work. And Um, uh, so I said augmenting the artworks because some of the artworks are not there where, you know, uh, when, when you go, you will see that they're, they disappeared. That's the part of the storage uh, project, actually. So the least that we could do for the ones who are, do not exist anymore, we just created some kind of a movement, uh, you know, so that you can experience the artworks in a different way or in like these other works. like some performances, like not like that these spatial works. We created like these little clips that that explains the artworks, uh, some performance works, some of the video works or some of the spatial, uh, you know, artworks. We decided to have like a little two minute video, uh, sorry, 10 second videos out of it. Last but not the least, uh, and that's part that we are still working on. We started modeling the artworks. As you can see, that's Ahmed Yurk. Or Another work by Ramazan John. And that's like you can just click there, sketch fab. Uh, I'm not going to make it confusing, but you know, you can have the 3D model of these artworks. So overall, what we want to do, so I'm just running this video at the back so that, you know, you have an idea about the, you know, about the Raj. That's the virtual reality virtual tour that we created. Actually, overall, when you just like enter the, you know, the streets of the Raj, you will realize that, uh, uh, everything looks a bit too random uh, and like, and, but they create a whole together and there are some layers and layers of data. So we, for example, one year, you know, like uh, Jam Sonar created this work and another year, you know, another artwork can, can come and share the same context, the same art context or 
uh, even the process, like the intrusion of the local people or some little kids on the streets, they keep changing the streets of the uh, through the artworks and through their random, uh, you know, uh, I would say intrusion of these works. So these are the this that's the virtual tour that we created because of the pandemic. We didn't want you know so much people to be uh, part of this Daraj thing, but uh, and also. Uh, as uh, all some of the performances were more like a one-time event, we wanted to document everything all in one part. Uh, so you can have a look to this one. It's the exhibition called Exist, uh, Var in Turkish. Uh, and when, when you go, the collection is still, you know, is under this virtual tour that you can like go and visit and have some information about it. And uh, now, last but not the least, we are still working with some other projects about the digital uh, versions of Daraj. But uh, about that one is that, like you know, that during the Amber Festival, during the Hecaton, we will be working. We will be using Daraj as a canvas. Uh, that's why I wanted to, like, you know, present a little bit of Daraj, but also explain how we, uh, you know, as this random people of this digital era, uh, work in this, you know, in this project all together with the Daraj. Uh, one good thing about this Daraj and Ambark Network Festival and the Hecaton uh, is that uh, like Daraj, Ambark Network Festival welcomes everyone from uh, several, uh, you know, fields like artists, urbanists, designers, coders, 3D artists, photographers, or any professions. Uh, and we want, you know, and we prefer if your, 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 the project that you have in your mind fits to this Umur Bey Daraj neighborhood, following this Daraj collective, it would be quite an important and good part of it. So I didn't mention much, much about the urban transformation of this uh, area. Uh, but of course, there's a threat from the from the people, from the, the local government, uh, because that's a that's a you know site that is next to the harbor, and uh, that's very uh, they, they have a tram line that's quite uh, that's quite the, uh, like uh, central, but also they are at the center uh, of everything. Uh, so in a way, the gentrification is inevitable in that area. But then, like the large people being more popular, uh, but at the same time, it, it might just lead to an end where they will not be able to find an atelier to rent in that area. So it's kind of a, a dilemma that they are having at the same time. Uh, but also, very randomly, this site has a refugee center. So all the refugees or immigrants, they happen to get registered in that little neighborhood. It's not related to Daraj Collective, but again, it's in the secret of this land that we see in Daraj. Uh, and of course, the urban texture is constantly changing with uh, any artwork. Uh, we just provided here seven, art, uh, seven streets uh, that you can explore. The website is here, so you can check. You can reach it through the uh, through the Amber Network Festival uh, work, but also you will see how you know the urban texture of historical buildings, of the you know uh, new facades of some buildings and artworks. They are all uh, merged into one old uh, you know artwork. I would say so far one of the most impressive uh you know uh, independent art collectives uh, that really changed the spirit of this land um so last but not the least again this time uh if you happen to just like i don't know whether jenkan will be have a chance to distribute this book to you but you know that's like where you can get some of the works by uh daraj people like the book, uh, but also if you are curious, if you want to read a little bit more, we've been publishing together with Burkay and Kuanch, uh, like since then, not only 
I've been working with some technical teams to create these art, uh, to these to create these digital works. But together with my uh, partners, academic partners, I've been like working uh, in you know other aspects of uh, the art so far. So, uh, boop, 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 boop. I guess that's all that I want to share for today. I was thinking that I'm going to run out of time, but I'm a bit early. Uh, thanks for listening. So, I mean, I think it's an open ground for asking me questions about either this work or other works that we've been uh, talking. Yes. Okay. Thanks so much, Gizem. That was a lovely presentation. Uh, so, is if there is questions, we can have the questions first. Uh, I have two questions. So, if no one asks in in ten seconds, I might be jumped in. <laughs> okay. Um, then maybe we can take the lead first. So. Um, as you mentioned uh, uh, during the last presentation, as the slides, as our focal point is mostly on the neighborhood, uh, the Daraj neighborhood, Umur Bay neighborhood, as a social texture and a can canvas, as we also declared in the um, the announcement. In the announcement, how would you evaluate the neighborhood within the VR perspective that we are going to? Uh, we are going to do uh, the hackathon and and also the virtual exhibition. And what might be the difference looking at this neighborhood through a VR perspective? Okay, you mean the virtual reality perspective in of this uh, land? Yes. Uh, okay, from from a you know, uh, although I mentioned that I'm not an artist, from a you know, like more ar artistic point of view, the immersiveness uh, of this neighborhood. Uh, how it you know it gets the people who are just visiting and how they become these people visiting the site becoming part of the artwork is a very impressive thing that might lead to the idea of the immersiveness of the virtual reality. Uh, it's definitely uh, you know a spatial experience that you see. So it's not an artwork that you see and experience with your eyes, but other with the you know with the sound that you hear, like you you know the project like Sound of the Raj, but you know people interacting with you. I think the spatiality, or in short, you know this immersiveness of the area is quite suitable for an uh, virtual reality work. Uh, I guess you know for this. Thanks. Esa, do you have? Also, I have a two question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are your uh, artist selection process during the digital exhibition? And also, do you have any any criteria uh, to exhibit art in a digital garage? That's, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's a good one. We are still still working on it, actually. Uh, first of all, it's not an easy process. So digital creatorship is another, you know, thing that includes some technical aspects because we are talking about not gigabytes of data, but we have to limit all the models and everything in some little kilobytes. That's first of all the technical part. Uh, second part, the dialogue with the artist, that's the part that we are working on. One of my master's students is working how we can digitize, you know, what would be the methodology of digitizing an artwork? Is it like the photorealistic that I showed like that? Or would it be maybe like a creating like animation or some performances? But so far, the basics that we have shown are more about, you know, documentation almost as simple as an archaeological documentation you know uh, then we will go to and to the next process is how can we augment the artwork and maybe in the future if we have you know further effort and time how you know people can really work collaboratively to create in the augmented environment that would be the next step we are not there yet but that's a very important question how do we digitize and how do we make how do we how do we augment the artworks 
so far uh, still like up in the air in our minds. Yes, that's a very good one anyway. The second one? The second, second one. Uh, do you have any uh, content criteria to the exhibit uh, the artworks? Uh, poof, poof, poof. Uh, that's, uh, you know, yes and no, actually. Uh, our, create, our criteria is uh, a little bit more superficial, I would say, is that, you know, we want them to like, to be as immersive as possible, as mm -hmm. three-dimensional as possible. Uh, and at first, together with Ekmeloja, we just like create, we went through the neighborhood and we, we picked some artworks, but when we, we happened to work on the desktop, we realized that these artworks are not the best ones to augment, you know? Technically, mm -hmm. so it's a combination of this dialogue. It's 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 like we are doing this collective design, uh, collaborative design. Actually, uh, we are designing the, uh, together with the dialogue with the artists. Uh, the criteria were more uh, about their three dimensionality, uh, mm -hmm. but the more we work, I think more criteria will pop up under this topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions? <laughs> questions, okay. <laughs> Maybe Jenkan is here. Is is he? I don't know whether Jenkan and Ali. Yes. Is there. Yeah. Uh, can I ask one question? Sure. Yes, <laughs> I'm wondering is this project is kind of intervention to the urban condition of Umur Bay neighborhood? Are you, um, the purpose is like that? Yeah, kind of intervention for the future of this neighborhood. Is that this kind of aim in this project? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, intervention to the change in the neighborhood. I, 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 we hope we can. Yes, of course. Every academic research, and especially you know any critique about the gentrification, the you know very, uh, you know what, you know violent uh, gentrification of this area. Of course, that's something that we do critique. But I don't know whether we will be strong enough to do an intervention in the process. I hope we can uh but mm -hmm. i hope like we as academicians and you know these digital architects if you are that strong it would be wonderful wonderful but so far what i can say that we are working hand in hand with daraj people so whatever their methodology is because it's their life uh, anyway and their ideology we are following them but are we gonna be strong enough to change the policies in that neighborhood through these websites maybe i mean we hope so yeah. What do you think, Erika? Yeah, that, that's a, that's a really good question. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know, but I think that it's uh, this is a step, and um, I would like to add something uh, actually, because I would like to go to the beginning of the of this project, like the last years, uh, the, the first days of uh, quarantine, and uh, we were having online meetings as a collective. And uh, we were thinking about the possible ways how we can make this exhibition, that year's exhibition, which is referring to last year's exhibition. So uh, when, when the VR idea came up, um, the first question was, because what Daraj offers is something, as Guzan said, something very physical, something that is based on face-to-face -face communication, uh, having beers in the corner and going to houses of people because you're invited and going to the stores of the neighborhood. So, you have something that is extremely physical and how you can reflect this environment to in a, in a virtual space. So this was our uh, main question. It, it, in the beginning, we were hesitant actually to, to, to move on the project, but uh, when we when we dive into the details, uh, this, was, this is not something like a uh, virtual exhibition or online exhibition. This is something more deeper than that. It's more, way more immersive. Because as Guzdan said, there is an archaeological aspect of, of this neighborhood. Because when you look to a certain wall, 
you you're, you look you're looking to a mural, but there there are layers of murals in this wall. So uh, this is something to think about as well. Uh, uh, when we were having our meetings, we thought uh, this would be an opportunity for us. The Darash Virtual Reality Project would be an opportunity for us to create some sort of an infra infrastructure, a base for the previous year exhibitions as well. So and also as Gizdan said, this is a learning process for us too. And uh, I happen to be the one that who are taking the photos while we're documenting the artworks. And uh, for me, as personally as a photographer, this was something challenging for me as well, because I am also learning the process, how you can uh, transfer uh, something very physical into something uh, in, in, to an immersive platform. So uh, this is something that uh, we are also learning as a collective. So, and also I would like to add, because this is an immersive project, this, this is also something extremely challenging to, to, to do so, because this is something physical and the, the platform that is created for this physical simulation is also something very immersive. So this is what is challenging. And I think uh, the result is something something really nice something that that we are really proud of working with this great team i would like to, i wanted to add this actually and if you have any questions about the neighborhood i would love to answer also thank you it looks very exciting <laughs> i just wonder if it initiates some communication and uh, uh, some kind of collaboration with the neighborhoods as in particular, the neighborhood residents, and if transforms into another thing for um, the future. For the, for the residents of the neighborhood, the, we we try to explain the Raj virtual reality and what it is and what what are the aims of this project. For the residents and the locals, um, interestingly, it's I mean it's not interesting because the, what they are experience, experiencing is something very physical as well. For them. The Raj Virtual Reality Project was not something extremely special, I would say, because this is the location, this is the neighborhood they are living in. For them, for some of them, it was not different than having a, having photos of the neighborhood. But uh, the Raj Virtual Reality opened up another door, which is uh, some, uh, which is actually, uh, you know, uh, taking out, destroying all these obstacles, the physical obstacles. That uh, that if you want to be in this neighborhood, you can, uh, and if you are not able to be here physically, now you can, and you are in an immersive platform. Platform also, the the uh, visual reality. I think um, got uh, this positive feedback from people who who never been in this neighborhood, and this is something very special when you think about it, because it's when you are walking in every five meters, you will see something else. I mean, sometimes if you would like to experience the whole street, it will take half an hour to walk from one end to, to another end because every five meters you will have another story, you will have another artwork, or you will see a piece of an artwork that it's story that that, that it has another story. So uh, this was something like that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, very good questions, Kristen. Though you know, it's yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe one thing that, like, you know, Ali Jam just started this, uh, you know, this randomness of the project that is happening in Daraj in the physical, uh, very surprising. They did never stop during the pandemic time. We happen to be like separated physically from each other. Uh, it's been some years and we are producing it more and more through the spirit of this Daraj. That's a very, you know, important one. That's, uh, I mean, of course, what I'm presenting is the result, you know, but uh, through even for the simple virtual tour, we've been exploring which ways are would be the best, like, shall we reconstruct the site, you know, in a, as an archaeological site and like make the streets as, as in the virtual tour or shall we use the photogrammetry or photo modeling to, to do that? We use the drones to, you know, to like maybe record the outside. Then we realize that as we are, 
you know, like as, uh, you know, as a human, as a visitor or, or as a user of this garage, uh, it's the best is to, you know, experience the, the, the area from, a, like, from human eye level, uh, like in the Google Street. Uh, but, you know, we checked the Google Street and we realized that there is none. You know, these streets do not, you know, exist in Google Street. Then we created some of these little, you know, uh, little virtual tours together with them. About the augmented reality uh, work, the, the mobile app that we are still working on, uh, we will see the results. You know, we will see uh, and we will see how many people, people will be downloading that. Would it be really a virtual museum or would it be too much of a museum site that we might not really like the museum gallery site or would it be more the randomness of the virtual that's most probably we will start seeing the results in six months when we will see people downloading and using the app mm -hmm. any other questions or any additions Um, is there uh, any other neighborhood in Izmir that you want to transform? Hmm. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, like digitally transfer? Are you asking me to meet that I yeah, have digital or are you asking any and Arash people whether they want to transform any other neighborhood? <laughs> We are trying to keep the keep the neighborhood intact uh, for now. We are we are focused more on that, so we don't have any intentions to transform another neighborhood. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Of course, we we see some similarities in other countries, but you know, some in Turkey as well. The artists, you know, just like. Uh, living in an area and changing the you know the neighborhood and then these neighborhoods they become more expensive than they were initially because if we are talking about land we, we are talking about the habitation you know and we are working about people's income and you know this kind of thing uh you know art might seem a little bit secondary but in these neighborhoods you realize that art is the leading force for people to come and experience these spaces. That's why, like, since day one, since I met, uh, you know, with, I'm not talking about collectives, but also the streets of the right. I mean, I was impressed. Uh, I'm not part of them, but maybe I feel like I'm part of them uh, already. So I hope we can pass this uh, emotion to you and to your artworks during the hackathon. Any other questions uh, before we end up the session? I want to add something about the book, actually, since I'm, I'm looking at the at our cover now. Uh, we will have a second print, uh, a new version, a new version that is, that includes this year's and the previous year's exhibitions and activities too. We are working on this now. Uh, if you're interested, you can email us and uh, we will send you the book when it's ready. Uh, but it's going to take time. Maybe for the last question, uh, as far as we know that, uh, you have students that also attending to our the VR Storytellers program, this workshop, the whole over program. Uh, how uh, do you integrate your VR practices into the academic environment? Hmm, that's interesting, yeah. Uh, actually, most of the works that I presented were like mostly academic work, like results of the academic research. Uh, that's why I'm, I quickly passed this game that we created not only as a virtual reality, but also a game. Because there is this new, how can I say? Uh, when I started working in the digital uh, environment, like about the, this computational tools, people were more hesitant of realizing because people were thinking that the aura of the real life will never end. 
But now during the pandemic time, we realized that, you know, uh, that's something inevitable and it came. And we realized, you know, the distance, you know, like we are, we are seeing the history now. I mean, we are really in the, at the turning point, and it's not about the academic work or artwork, or even in our daily lives, we are seeing the inevitable influence of digital. Uh, so, I mean, how are they related to my artworks? I mean, to my academic works, it's usually, what I do is that I do academic works, and then I use, I pick the right environment to display that it might be a game it might be a virtual reality work it might be like an augmented reality work or it can be you know none of these digital stuff uh, so that's why i never think that including my students and referring to them i never mention about the tool you know the tool is something that you pick after you have an initial idea uh, that's why all the works that I presented, they are based on the research first, then we pick the right tool and different technologies. I didn't mention most of the techniques or programs or software that we use because I feel like these are some, you know, little additions to what we want to do. So for the hackathon, I can say that, like, you know, have the idea first, then you will find the means. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yes. So I think slowly. Ah, Ahmed. Ahmed is typing. Maybe I can convey his message. Um, also, during this eight minutes, I can. I want to make a small announcement. Uh, if it's okay. Uh, the ter Thursday's uh, event that will be would be made by Mohsen Hazrati was postponed to Sunday, uh, 3 CET, 3 p.m. CET. So please keep uh, keep it in mind that uh, the Thursday event post was postponed to Sunday. <laughs> All right, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are waiting for your questions. <laughs> Uh, and for tomorrow also, uh, tomorrow we will be listening to Hayla Gulestani's presentation at the same time. So until then, maybe we can say goodbye. Uh, as far as I understand that we don't have any additional questions. We can thank Daraj and Gizdan Varinoğlu, Ali Cem specifically also. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much then. Everyone is, so. everyone yeah, thank is thanking yeah. at the moment. Thank you so Bye. much. So yeah. we hope to see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Have a nice week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.